here in Alberta, we had, you know, basically with the swipe of a pen, they closed down um, the, it was a massive Christian homeschooling school board that operates under the education ministry here. And they basically shut it down, the alleged uh, financial impropriety. They didn't even bother to investigate. And overnight, nearly um, a third of all the homeschool students in the entire province were out of, um, but with, without a school to go to, really. Um, what's been your experience with that pervasive anti-Christian sentiment in education in America? I'm so glad you asked about this, Sheila, because this is at the heart of what so-called education has become today. You know, I mentioned John Dewey earlier. He, you know, if you, if you go to Wikipedia, they call him the, you know, the godfather, the founding father of America's public education system. And he really was. And fortunately, he was very honest about his agenda. Uh, one of the things that he did, he he drafted and signed what's called the Humanist Manifesto. Mm -hmm. And um, in this Humanist Manifesto, it was an incredibly important document. The very first plank, they said, we religious humanists, and you know, to their credit, they were honest. It's a, you know, it's a religious worldview. But they said, we religious humanists regard the universe as eternally self-existing and not created. And you compare that with the first words of the Bible, and the Bible tells you that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So you have this guy, John Dewey, with a lot of money from the Rockefellers, by the way, um, oh, you know, big those oil Rockefellers. Money. They're involved in everything, right? Including the global warming scam that we mm -hmm. were exposing not too long ago. And you had John Dewey team up with the Rockefellers and a whole bunch of others to hijack our education system. They did. They were very, very effective at it. They actually targeted the teaching colleges. And so John Dewey was very open about his ideology. He was a humanist. He rejected even the idea of God. Uh, he wanted socialism. He thought, and, and if you read this Humanist Manifesto, it's very clear. They talk about getting rid of uh, the profit motive and collectivizing the means of production. I mean, it could have come straight out of Fidel Castro's right. handbook, you know. And um, he was very, very transparent about the fact that we want to use the schools to fundamentally transform American children so that we can transform America. And he wanted a, a socialist America, and he said so. Um, and so from the very beginning, and you know, this is really when we started getting the institutionalization of the government education system in America, and I'm quite sure that uh, this, these same influences dominate the Canadian system. From the very beginning, one of the purposes of this system was to erode the Christian faith of the American people. Uh, it's been very, very successful. And you know, in America, I, I don't think you guys have the same thing in Canada, but in America, our founding fathers, when they wrote the Declaration of Independence, they said, they actually wrote in these exact words, we consider these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. So our founding fathers in our country said, we have rights and our rights come from God. And then they continued, and the purpose of government is that governments are established among men to protect these rights. So our founders said, God gave us rights, God created us, and we established governments to protect the rights that God gave us. Now, John Dewey said, hey, there is no God. And that means there's no objective source for your rights. So our founders didn't view this as a religious statement. They, in fact, viewed it as a self-evident truth, as they wrote in our Declaration of Independence. But um, with this philosophy that Dewey had, this ideology, this religious worldview, if you will, which is how he described it, uh, they gradually got rid of that. In fact, in, in the 1960s, in the early 1960s, it culminated in a series of Supreme Court decisions that banned the Bible from our schools, that banned prayer from our schools. And now they literally teach the kids, they, the same Common Core people have the Next Generation Science Centers, they teach the kids that there is no God, that science proves there is no God, that we came uh, from apes that came from slime, and that there was no creator at all involved, it was just chance over billions of years. And so kids go out into the world, and th you know, this is fundamental to the worldview of a person. If a God created you, with rights and a God loves you and you're created in his image, you look at the world very differently than if it was just all a big giant cosmic accident, your life has no more value than that of your goldfish. You, know, you have a totally different outlook on the world. And so in America, and I'm quite sure the same is true of Canada, the government schools have become probably the single largest engine for the propagation of anti-Christian religious views and ideological views that, that exists. 
That's an excerpt from my weekly show, The Gun Show. It airs every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Each week I bring you an informal interview with an interesting newsmaker or citizen activist you might not have heard of, but who is making a big difference in Canadian politics. And we'll talk about issues in a way you'll never see done in the mainstream media. To subscribe, go to therebel.media backslash shows.